Oh, hi. Welcome back to another episode of Black Dot Miniatures and Paints. Kevin coming back to you this week with another Space Marine out of the Space Marines Adventure Box we found at Target. This is the Salamander out of that box. He's a Tac Marine. You know, after all this time of doing Dark Angel this, Dark Angel that, it's actually neat to try a Salamander for once in my life. So we're going to check this sucker out together and see what we can get done. Hopefully he doesn't look like a Dark Angel. So this dude started out with a uh, nice Vallejo black primer, and we come through with GW's Wall Flesh. We just thin this down, ran it through the airbrush. It's going to give us a nice green to start with. We're doing an all-over coat here. So just make sure you get full coverage. Make sure you get all the little nooks and crannies, stuff like that. So with never having done a salamander before, this is kind of a learning experience. We take some uh, Warpstone Glow to it and we just start hitting this from the top down. It starts giving us a nice coat, starts getting us where we're trying to go, but eh. We ended up playing with this a little bit, trying to get the color just right to actually make it have that popping green that the Salamanders are known for. Next we switch over to a Warpstone Glow and Moot Green 1 to 1 mix. Again, thinning it down, running it through the airbrush, no big deal there. <sighs> It just didn't do what I wanted it to. You know, it, it gave you the nice greens, but at the exact same time, it still wasn't there yet. So we kept playing with it. So we hit some Liquitex white ink on it, and we didn't do much here. As you can tell, it's just kind of a little baby coat. I don't even know that it truly made a difference. It made me feel better. So we laid down this white coat here and then we promptly switched to a uh, pure moot green. Started running that on top of the white. Uh, you can give, say it gave it somewhere to go to and maybe that's true, but at the same time, you probably could have just gone to straight moot green and you would have got the same effect. So with this moot green, we're just trying to hit it with the 45 degree top down. We're wanting to focus on his helmet here. We're wanting to also focus on the backpack and any of the little leg plates that are going to be catching some of the sun. So just take your time. Be careful here. But at the exact same time, if you go a little bit hard, badass, he's supposed to be bright, bright green. So we got somewhere to work to. Next, we move on to a bad and black. And all we're trying to do here is line in all of our stuff that's going to be black or is going to be silver. So there is a lot to do around this model. It gives you a lot to be busy with. Just take your time, work around, pick out all the stuff. If you need to, check the box art on it. These, uh, This box that it came out of actually gave you a lot of good reference material for how these suckers are supposed to be painted up. So in talking about checking the box art, uh, I started to lay down the shoulder pad and said, oops, ah! Okay, hold on, hold on, wipe it off, wipe it off, try again, try again. Oh, maybe we can save it. So if you jack up like this, no big deal. You can usually hit it with just your finger and wipe it off. If not, wet your brush real quick and you can wipe all this paint off. We are working thin here, so it does give us somewhere to work to. Next, we move on to thin down black Templar contrast paint. This is about two to one with thinner, and we're just kind of doing a recessed panel lining, recess shading, however you want to say it here. We're just going through and cutting in all the dark lines in his armor panel. We're hitting all the face mask. Um, later, we actually do use this in place of known wall, and it, it does a great job. I was really surprised with how well it did. So just take your time and cut in all those little panels here. There's not too much, and as long as you're being careful, have a nice tip on your brush, it works very well. So while I got y'all here sitting here watching me do this recess shading and panel lining, whatever you want to call it, I just want to say thank y'all for y'all coming back week after week. We got a video up to 500 views this week, and that's freaking awesome. I am excited about that. I mean, I check my YouTube studio every day just to see where we're at, see how many subscribers we got, see how many views on the videos, and to see one at 500 views, that is awesome. I never expected to have any of my videos hit that many views, and to have one do it, it just means the world to me. I appreciate it. Thank y'all so much. So next we're moving on to GW's Moot Green for our edge highlighting. Like I said in last week's video, it does get easier the more you sit here and practice it. It does make the model look so much better. It's, it's really a necessary evil. The best suggestion that I can give you to make it easier is to have a good grip on the brush, have a good grip on your uh, little paint handle here, where you can pull the strokes towards you 
and then if you have a nice tip on the brush that is going to give you the finest edge you can come up with the biggest thing here is take your time if it takes you know five billion seconds to do it that's fine we're doing this out of enjoyment we're doing this because we enjoy the hobby we're not trying to rush 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 if we were trying to rush through all of this we would just skip the step entirely throw all our cannon fodder out on the front line half painted three color minimum make it look good but if you are spending the time to do a specialized model definitely do your edge highlighting for the metal bits around this model we're just moving to gw's lead belcher nothing crazy for the work up here we painted it all black earlier to give it a nice undercoat to build up off of so now that we're switching to lead belcher it's going to give a nice one coat slap it on it's done paint by number style so we're picking out the barrel to his gun here we're picking out his little extra i don't know extra ammo he's got there for his flamethrower his grenades on the back uh his power pack components that we got there and then also the rivets on his leg the rivets on his legs completely dealer choice I was looking at him and said, I would like to add a little bit of interest right here. I think that would make it look good. Again, if you don't want to, you certainly don't have to. This is just how I painted this model. And again, this is my first salamander. So you try it, cool. If you don't, cool. It's your model, paint it how you want to. For the fuel canister for the weapon and also for his eyes we're moving to corn red all we're doing is painting the center band around the fuel canister on the front one and the back one and then we're also cutting in his eyes with this corn red this will just give us somewhere to start from that's a deep red that we can work in a nice thin glaze later on to make it have a nice subtle transition in the paint color so just be careful here i'm working with the detail brush for the eyes you should always do that then we move on to Black Templar Thin down again. This is the same mix we were using earlier for the panel lining. I just had it out and said, hell, let's try it. We could have used normal just the same. So then the gold bits around the model, we're moving to Retributor Armor. There's not too many to worry about here. He has a skull and crossbones on the fuel canisters, I guess to signify that the shit's toxic. We've also got a skull on his helmet and a couple of quillas about on his knee and then one on his chest, if I remember right. We're working with the detail brush here. These are very small little fiddly things on here. So just be careful, work with a nice detail brush. If you need to thin your metallics down and do two thin coats, because you do want the paint to flow very nicely from the brush to the model. So I know people say don't thin your uh, metallics down, scratch that noise. You can thin your metallics down, you just have to apply two thin coats. Then we to highlight the black, we're going to Administratum Gray. All we're doing here is using the side of our brush to cut in easy edge highlights. If you try and paint these freehand, they can be a little bit tricky. So if you cheat and use the side of your brush, it really gets the job done with the least amount of stress possible. For his shoulder pads, we just cut in a horizontal and vertical line on the inside of the green trim of the shoulder pads. And that just works as a nice free highlight. If you need to, go back and fix this with the Ministratum Gray later. To start highlighting the reds, we just move to a Mephiston red. This is really thinned down, and all we're trying to do is cause the color to uh, transition a little bit from the darker corn red that we have around the gold to a little bit brighter as it moves away from the recesses. For his helmet, we're just focusing on the front 50% of the glass lens of the helmet. That way we can look as, make it look as though the color is transitioning from the front towards the back getting a little bit darker. The only thing here is just being careful not to overdo it on the helmet. You definitely don't want to mess up any of the nice transitions we made, the edge highlights we made, any of the workup we did on the green throughout the model. So be careful, but it's super simple. To shade the gold, we're moving to an Army Painter Flesh Tone. You could easily use Reckon Flesh Shade, just the same. But all we're doing is just putting this shade over the gold. We're trying not to let it pull up on the greens. We're trying not to let it pull up on any of the colors. Just monitor this, make sure it doesn't go a little bit too crazy on you. It certainly can if you're not careful with it. Once we finish with this, we move back to Retributor Armor. We're just bringing these hues back up to where they need to be. 
we kind of dulled them down a little bit with the Army Painter Flesh Tone. So we just want to bring them back up to the nice shiny gold and then we can start highlighting them from here. To start highlighting our golds, we're going to use Liberator Gold. All we're doing is trying to hit the top parts of all the little shiny metal bits around him. That would cause the metal to glint and be a little bit more reflective. So we're hitting the tops of the skulls, we're working on the top 50% of the little um, sarcophagus, whatever he's got on the back there. We're also hitting on his leg band here where light's going to hit and be the brightest. After that, we're going to switch to a mixture of Liberator Gold and Runefang Steel 1 to 1. Exact same concept with what we were doing before. All we're doing here is working in a smaller area of the Liberator Gold just to cause the golds to transition to have it make a little bit better highlight. The one great thing about golds and metallics in general is they are very forgiving if your blends are not just on point, so you can get away with a lot here. Just be careful look at the areas where the metal was. The final color for this model is going to be Runefang Steel. For the golds we're just going to work in a smaller smaller section than what we had already done with the previous workout. We're hitting the top of his little deal on his back here, the bottom corners, we hit the top of the skull, then we move to the silver components. For these little rivets on his leg, no big deal, we just want to hit the top of these with Runefang Steel to cause a subtle transition in them. While we have this out, we're also going to hit the tips of the power pack components on his back there. We're also going to work around the flamer, make the top of that the brightest silver it can be, and make the model look as natural as possible with the downward light source. Alright guys, so here's our finished product. I think this guy turned out great. Again, this is my first time painting a salamander and he doesn't look like a dark angel, so I would say this is a huge success. So again, the biggest lessons for this is just to go bright. It's a salamander. Go bright and do your edge highlighting. The rest of it will fall into place. Well guys, thanks for checking me out this week. This has been Kevin with Black Dot Mentors of Paints. If you found something useful here, please leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you found something useful. Maybe I can help someone paint a salamander army using this video. That would be freaking fantastic. So again, thank you for checking me out. This has been Kevin. We'll check y'all next week. Bye for now.